Veronica Kihugi. I am the founder and director of Anaya Pharmaceuticals. So I am passionate about health system strengthening here in Kenya and beyond, in Africa and beyond. And I hope we will be able to learn something from my presentation. So I will cover why we need to prioritize healthcare for respiratory diseases and our role as pharmacists in respiratory diseases. I'll also cover sore throat at length and how we can manage sore throat, the difference between sore throat and tonsillitis, antibiotic use in sore throat, and our role as pharmacists in patient self-care for improved respiratory health. Respiratory diseases, as we all know, are diseases that affect any part of the airways of the lungs. So they are among the leading causes of morbidity and mortality worldwide. They affect about 81% of the population at a certain point in time within the year. And some people actually have terminal respiratory diseases that affect them throughout the year. Patients with respiratory diseases mostly seek help from community pharmacies where pharmacists are before they can go to the hospital. So there are various respiratory diseases. They can be divided into upper and lower respiratory tract diseases. They include common cold, pharyngitis, laryngitis, tracheitis, bronchitis, influenza viruses, infections by influenza viruses, infections by adenoviruses. We also have terminal illnesses like COPD, asthma, and the recent pandemic we had COVID-19 also affecting the respiratory system. So our role as pharmacists basically in respiratory diseases is to support patients to self-care because mostly we rush to give antibiotics, which should not be the case. We should teach patients how to care for themselves when they have these diseases. We should optimize the use of medicines. Some of these diseases require treatment using more than one drug. So we need to optimize the use of medicine so that patients do not have pill burdens and they can't adhere to their doses. We need to support people to live healthier lives so we need to tell them what they need to do to avoid respiratory diseases. If they need to quit smoking, if they need to stay away from dust, if they need to keep warm, they need to know this so that they may not get the respiratory diseases. So we need to work more on the prevention side before we go to treatment. We also need to support people to live independently so that they know how to deal, how to self-care, how to deal with their diseases before they come to the hospital or before they come to the pharmacy. So I'll now delve into sore throat. Sore throat is basically when you have a painful, dry or scratchy feeling in your throat. And typically it should be a self-limiting condition and it should go away on its own without taking any, any antibiotics or any medications. It's commonly presented by patients, especially during winter or during the cold conditions. Causes of sore throat include viral infections, environmental factors, allergies, and smoking. Sometimes sore throat is caused by bacterial infections and mostly group A streptococcal infections, but this is less common. Mostly the sore throats that patients present with are viral infections and sometimes environmental factors. Viral causes often come with a cough, running nose, hoarseness of the throat, and sometimes it may come with conjunctivitis. Bacterial infection, that is when someone has strep throat, manifests with fever, white throat patches, white throat patches, so they have white patches on their throats, and inflammation. A sore throat can also stem from an allergy, a postnatal drip, dryness, excessive use of voice. So for people who work and they have to speak a lot, they may present with sore throat, reflux related inflammation. So from guard and then you get a sore throat. Also, you can get sore throat if you use a lot of tobacco, if you smoke a lot, if you have weak immune systems, and if you constantly get upper respiratory infection. So as I've said, most of the times when patients present to us, the sore throat that they have is either viral or environmental. So using antibiotics routinely is discouraged. So throat is a frequent upper respiratory tract infection. And if we are always giving antibiotics, then we are promoting antibiotic resistance. So we should try to do self-care first unless we have done a lab test to confirm the presence of a bacterial infection. We should also ask the right questions 
when we are clacking the patient before giving any treatment or before recommending self-care. So some of the questions we need to ask is, are there noticeable red or white spots in your throat? Do you have a cough? Is the cough dry or do you have phlegm? What is the color of the phlegm, if any? Have you experienced a fever? If so, for how long? What's the average temperature for those who may have taken their temperature? And how did you measure it? Is swallowing painful? Can you eat? Can you drink? Do you have any allergies? And do you have any other symptoms like acid reflux? So we should do proper clacking to understand the symptoms of the patient. Sometimes it could not be the sore throat that is the issue. It could be the GAD, the gastrointestinal symptoms. So we need to do the right clacking before we can offer management to the patient. The red flag symptoms for sore throat. So a severe sore throat that has gone beyond a week may have symptoms like uncomfortable swallowing and difficulty swallowing as well. Difficulty speaking for some people, if it's too chronic, it may come with breathing issues or limited mouth opening. They may also present with joint discomfort, ear pain or neck swelling. They may have a fever that exceeds 38.3 degrees Celsius, and this may be accompanied by shivering, chills, sweating at night. Regularly, they may have sore throat instances recurring. So they have sore throat, it goes away, then it recurs after several days, and they may have persistent hoarseness that has lasted over two weeks. So for these patients, we should either refer to a clinician or consider doing rapid test to test whether they have strep throat so that we may be able to give the right treatment. I will give the difference between sore throat and tonsillitis because these two are commonly confused and sometimes they can be used interchangeably, but they are actually very different illnesses. Inflammation of the tonsils can occur due to strep bacteria and also sore throat can occur due to strep bacteria. But when you get tonsils, it attacks the tonsillar glands. And the tonsillar glands, as you can see on the diagram, are found on the sides of your, of your mouth. So the tonsillar glands act as catchers and exterminators of germs in the respiratory tract. So when a patient has tonsillitis, they have, apart from any other inflammation, they have inflammation on the tonsillar glands. Most of the times when patients have sore throat, they just have a general a general scratchy feeling or painful feeling in their throat. So the steps in management. So when patients present with sore throat, we should assess the causes. We should do proper clacking, ask the right questions, ask what symptoms they have when the sore throat pre presented, what they have done about it. We should also assess the symptoms. If you can, if the patient if you think you need to assess the patient, you can even use a torch to check what symptoms they have, symptoms that you can see and symptoms that the patient will talk about. So we'll be able to check also for the possibility of a strep throat based on the patient presenting symptoms and also whether the patient has a swollen uvula, do they have red spots in their mouth? Do they have gray spots on their tongue? Do they have inflamed tonsils? Do they have a fever? So if it's just a sore throat that is viral, with either viral or due to environmental factors and there's no possibility of strep throat, that is there's no fever and there's no other symptoms as in the diagram, then these patients should be on symptomatic treatment and self-care. These patients should not be given any antibiotic because the, the sore throat that they have is not strep throat. It is not caused by bacteria. If there's a possibility of strep throat, that is you have assessed the patient, they have presented with fever, the sore throat has lasted for more than a week and they have the symptoms that are shown in the diagram, then you should refer them to a physician to do a test to actually confirm that they have strep throat before they can be given an antibiotic. For pharmacies or community pharmacies that have rapid tests, rapid diagnosis, diagnostic tests, then you can perform one on this patient to confirm whether the, the sore throat is actually bacterial, is due to a bacterial infection, after which now you can give an antibiotic. So the actual management, the proper management is First, confirm if the patient doesn't have strep throat, refer them to symptomatic treatment and also talk to them about self-care. If there's possibility of strep throat, we need to refer this patient for further tests. So I'll talk about self-care remedies for sore throat. So for patients who do not have 
strep throat, then management is basically self-care unless we need to do symptomatic management. So lozenges or similar formulations intended to soothe the throat will work well. The patient should also take plenty of rest and take a lot of fluids and mostly warm drinks. They can use a cool mist humidifier to moisturize the air, especially if the sore throat is caused by dryness. Rest their voice until the throat feels better. If they've been speaking a lot, they should take a break from maybe work or meetings. Avoid smoking or places with a lot of smoke or other irritants. And for symptomatic treatment, we can manage any inflammation using anti-inflammatories. You can give paracetamol, you can give NSAIDs or any other analgesics. You can give sprays, lozenges that have anesthetics like benzocaine and lignocaine. And we could also give a mouthwash just to pre prevent any bacteria or germs that may be invading the throat area. So these are the remedies that we should talk to our patients about the self-care remedies for sore throat management. Antibiotics used in sore throat, as I've said, patients who have sore throat should not be given antibiotics, but unfortunately sore throat is the most common upper respiratory tract infection where inappropriate antibiotic use occurs. So pharmacists, we are responsible to ensure that antibiotics are not given unless the case is confirmed bacterial. And we can only confirm a bacterial case by doing a diagnostic test. Viral respiratory infections, as I've said, are self-limiting and do not warrant antibiotic use. And since we should be the antibiotic stewards, we should ensure that patients are only given antibiotics when they need them. So misuse of antibiotics like azithromycin is causing a lot of antibiotic resistance, which is deadly. And so we should practice the right care. We should ensure that patients who are given azithromycin, which is most commonly given, or amoxicillin and clavulanic acid, have been tested, have confirmed that they have strep throat, then they can be given antibiotics. So when strep throat is confirmed, penicillins are given as the first line agent. Macrolides like azithromycin can also be used as second line or in cases of penicillin allergy. Our role in self-care for improved respiratory health, we need to teach patients on respiratory disease prevention. We need to talk to them about the public health aspects of respiratory diseases. What is it that they can do to ensure that they don't get respiratory diseases, stay in clean places, wear a mask, eat a balanced diet, have proper aeration in their homes. And we should also talk to them about vaccination for their respiratory diseases for which vaccines are available. We should teach them on self-care practices so that it's not every time that they are sick that they need to come to us. Let's teach them how to use inhalers for those who need to use inhalers, to use inhalers correctly. And let's collaborate with patients to also understand what are their barriers to self-care. Sometimes we advise what a patient cannot afford. So let's sit down with them and understand what are their barriers to accessing health to doing self-care when they have respiratory diseases. Let's dispel any myths. Most of these patients will come over the counter to ask for azithromycin for a sore throat. So let's teach them. Let's talk to them about why your sore throat does not require an antibiotic. And let's also provide point of care tests to our pharmacies or our hospitals when we can, so that we are able to test for any bacterial infections to rule really, to rule them out before giving antibiotics. So this in this diagram is our role as pharmacists in self-care for, for improved respiratory health. My take home message is that as pharmacists, there remains ample potential for us to further advance self-care initiatives in order to enhance patient outcomes. The possibilities are extensive and promising. So let's be the champions to ensure that patients learn self-care and we are able to improve health for all. Thank you.